and Ben is wondering, what are your thoughts? What happened here? So that's my first question. There was something that wasn't moving and this kept moving. I don't know if that hit it or if that hit something else. I don't know. But it's got a cool thumb. That's the least of our worries. You think I could use this as a sun visor going down the road if the sun gets in my oh, eyes? Yeah. An adjustable sun visor? If I've seen this right, does that rotate too? Yes. So it rotates so, so you can reach out and turn it, grab it, and pull it too. Yeah, this whole bucket goes like that out there and then goes straight in and out. This is a great all excavator. This is an XL4100 Series 3. Uh, obviously on a truck carrier chassis. That It's actually a great all chassis, but kind of like a truck. Uh, full lockers in the rear end, Cummins engine, 9-speed transmission. And then uh, it's an excavator. Goes down the highway at 55 miles an hour. We've got another cab up here that you sit in and run the excavator. And then up here, when you're up in the cab, this is your forward and backwards, and this is your steering. So you can run and drive the unit from the cab while you're running the excavator. If you're coordinated enough. Up in the cab here, it's a basic truck, or like crane truck. So you got this sitting next to you. Can they even hear you? I don't know. Can you hear me? Barely. Maybe they can. I don't know. They're a lot closer to my mouth than you are, thankfully. <laughs> But we got, I believe this is an engine brake. I hope it is. Work? Huh? Does the heater work? I oh, don't know, I haven't figured that, that out yet. That's gonna be important on the way home. Temperature, we built air, that's built good. Built air, yeah. Oh yeah, we got air coming out of the vents. How many miles does it have? Uh, I don't know, it reads, oh, 926 miles. What? Well, you gotta think, these things get a lot of hours and low miles. So what are the hours? 7,200. That's not a lot of hours either. No. For something like this. No. So it's basically brand used. Yeah, oh, here's the sun visor. Check yeah, that out. Than a bucket. I think that it's been clean since it was new. No, <laughs> I think it's the first time it's ever been folded down. Um, not the biggest cab I've ever seen. No, it's it's room for one. Yeah. Nine speed, lights. I'm trying to figure out how to make these work. Might need to, oh, I got defroster going. Yeah. There, there are so many different aspects of equipment involved in this one piece of machinery. Yeah, it, it's all of There's them. There's a lot of things going on here. It's all of them, all at once. Can you tell them about the dual drive mode? Yeah. We got vents back here. These are blowing. Blinkers. I said, I don't know if this is an engine brake or not. I really hope it is because we're going over Sandium <laughs> Pass. Yeah. So good. we've got Sandian Pass over the Cascade Mountains. We're over in the valley in the western side of Oregon. We got to go over the Cascade Mountains and down into the east side. So I really hope that's an engine brake. This thing weighs 50,000 pounds. And that 9,000 or 10,000 pound Dodge is not going to be able to stop this if you have to run away. It also will not pull you up the hill if this doesn't make it. Oh, we got a yank and rope. So they hit this side too. What? They hit that side too. Well, I, I would imagine when you're running it from up in that cab, facing that way, it's really easy to run into stuff. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm going to try to drive this all the way home. I've never driven one of these before. I've never owned one of these before. I don't think I've ever actually... I've never even seen one before. I've never seen one in person like up close. I've seen them driving by on the road. I've seen a picture, that's it. The one you texted me. <laughs> so we're going to try to drive this home. The heat's heating up, we're good. So I'm gonna try to drive this home and then we've got some plans for it. It only so. has 900 hours, it should, everything should work fine, like new. We'll see. Okay, this thing is bouncy. I've, I've driven 100 feet. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is gonna be like the hay squeeze video where I'm gonna be regretting every single bump on the way home. Worst case scenario, we park in a turnout and go get the low bed. All right, I think he's going around the building. Let's see. Oh yeah, he's going around the building, so I'm gonna go this way. Casey's uh, crazy wild adventure today. He, uh, I bought something that neither one of us have ever seen before. Uh, where is he gonna come out? Oh, there he is, right there. He doesn't realize.
realize I have to go through all these speed bumps. Oh, goodness. And now we're going to go get some spreader bars, I think, that he bought off some guy in Marketplace that he can use on this. There it is. It's a great all <laughs> excavator drive truck. I don't even know what the hell you call these things. I'm going to call it the excavator drive truck. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, no plates, no license, no, I don't know. Yeah, just going to wing it. Funniest thing is, we just got here and the guy's like, okay, here's your receipt and here's your keys and thank you. He literally just handed him the keys. He had Casey sign a piece of paper and said thank you and he's like, enjoy, and just walked away. No instruction, no like, here's how you start it, here's how you run this, here's how you, nope, nothing. Just, here you go, enjoy. So, that's what he's doing, I guess. It might take us a little while to get home. It's bouncy. She's really bouncy. All the lights work, though. That's good. It's got one running light in the middle. It looks like it's out, one bulb. That's not bad. All right, pit stop number one, fuel stop and P stop. Got that done. Uh, we figured out, I think that our top speed might only be 42 or 45 miles an hour, yet to be determined. Here we go. Quick pit stop, Facebook Marketplace, pick up some spreader bars from a tow yard. How fitting that the guy owns a tow yard in case he's going there to pick up these spreader bars. So now we're off. 45 miles an hour, here we come. 48 miles an hour, that's the sweet spot for this thing. So I'm just a uh, pilot car, tail, tail gunner pilot car, I guess you would say. Just running with the hazards. 48 miles an hour. It seems to be where it's happy. Uh, I don't think he realizes he has the uh, rotator beacon light on, but we'll just leave that on for a while because that's more fun for me than him. So anyway, we'll uh, 48 miles an hour. This should be solid two and a half, three hours to get back. But uh, you know, gotta do what you gotta do to get the equipment home. We're heading down I-5 at 50 miles an hour. I think it's got a little more speed in it, but I'm already cooking it on the RPMs. I don't want to go much higher. Uh, it's kind of, it drives surprisingly good and kind of it's really scary all at the same time. So it's definitely bouncy, but it's going to be a long ride home when we get to the mountain right there because it does not have much power. <laughs> so 48 my, 48 miles an hour is the sweet spot my hands are sore from holding onto the wheel so tight yeah yeah she's an interesting ride you, uh the flashing beacon tells you who's driving which cab oh, really? that's been on the whole time yeah i turned it on because we're only doing 48 miles an hour. you should turn on the rest of the lights so it makes a lot of noises like that going down the road and every time some new noise goes off i get scared so i'm like is this it is this, is this, this what's gonna this, blow up is this the one that finally yeah. takes me out yeah I mean, it seems like it's doing all the things it's supposed to do. I think so. Like, so it's so low geared that you have to start out in fourth. Like I'm starting out in fourth gear of a nine speed. Wow. Like first is barely moving. Um, reverse, falls. I'm like, this thing is way too low gear. Then I got up to about 45 miles an hour. I was like, that's enough. I'm all in. We don't I'm need to go yeah. Like the gears are fine. As I was saying to the camera earlier, to the people earlier, we're going down the road, I'm like, okay, 48 is the sweet spot, but every now and then we get a peak at 52 on a downhill slope, oh, yeah. and then as soon as it levels out, it's my, right back, yeah. The grip just gets tight. And, and it tight. goes right back to 48 as soon as we level yeah. out, so. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Good thing we got out of his way. Yeah. We don't want him stuck behind us. We only had about, four or five cars behind us at the worst time so, so it's like it runs good 
Yeah, it's, it, it's like the steering is not anything bad. It's not loose or wobbly, but man, when it hits the bumps just right, it starts just bucking. Yeah, it looks like a wagon. Yeah, I'm in there just boom, boom. And the only time it smokes is when you get after it a little bit. Well, so what happens is the, uh, the engine brake, which it does have, thank God. Uh, when you use the engine brake and then you get back on the throttle, like you're deep into the throttle before the engine brake cuts off. So I think it's overlapping and that's when it's, it's just is a, it like it, black or white? It's black. Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, it's, it's just diesel. And it's just a puff and then it goes away. So I've been watching all the tires and watching the exhaust pipe and checking lights. Yeah. This whole incandescent and LED on the other side is throwing me off. I need that. My guess is somebody was climbing up and down this and they kicked that with a boot. They broke it and they probably went to the parts store and that's all they had. I have more LED, so I'll put an LED. Yeah, I put over side. there because it's totally wonky when you're from the back. Yeah. By like normal driving, we should have been home by like one, but I'm yeah. not. Yeah. There's no way this is going to last in that cup holder. It's no. getting launched for sure. Okay, so next pit stop will be 10 miles down the road when I, I was like, you're going to be ready to eat something at some point. I will stop at McKenzie Bridge and get chicken and stuff there. Okay, I'm just, well, I'm following you, so. Definitely not the fastest rig up the hills. But if you had a passing lane, I think all these people will get by. I don't want to back off too much because I won't be able to get moving again. Alright, everybody's by. We're doing like, I don't know, 25, 30. Speedometer is not completely accurate, so. We're just doing what we can do. Alright, we've made it to the hill. So far it's doing better than I thought. 24 miles an hour on the hill and we're probably on a not a very steep grade yet. This is only probably like 4%, maybe five. But you know, she's 50,000 pounds, so 24, 25 miles an hour. It's not horrible. I can only imagine how bumpy and shaky of a ride it is for Casey up inside that uh, cab so I'm sure his video perspective will be significantly different than mine check it out we just hit a thousand miles on the great all <laughs> it's old and used now we made it to the top of Sanium Pass 4,500 feet elevation and as you can see it is snowing out there got snow coming up on the windshield uh, now we're going to head down the other side which is where I am so glad this thing actually has an engine brake but they made it up no problem didn't even hit 200 degrees climbing the hill hey horsey what's up here they're like what the heck is that thing it made it over the mountain uh, was pleasantly surprised how consistent it was. Oh yeah, once I dropped into, I think it's seventh gear, it just sat there at 25 miles an hour. Yeah, and it, and and it, it didn't really waver. It didn't go slower or no, faster. No, it stayed it at that speed. Yeah, yeah. And the temperature got to like 190, 195 and just sat there. It was good, and we didn't really ever have a major holdup of people. I no. think the most we ever saw was like three or four. Yeah, and it wasn't for very long. We didn't have to use any of the turnouts, so we got to a passing lane. Yeah, and they were able just to go right by. Yeah, before anything ever like piled up. Yeah. I, I'm, I wasn't concerned with how fast it would go over the mountain. I just wanted it not to get hot climbing no, that grade. Sure. Yeah. That was my concern. As long as it didn't get... Temperature is always the biggest damage. As long as it didn't like heat up climbing the hill, that makes me very happy with the engine. Right. So, well, I mean, it has a little over a thousand miles. Yeah, we just now. cracked over a thousand miles on the way here. Granted, yeah. 7,000 hours, but a thousand miles. And, fun fact. What's that? When we left our last pit stop, when you got your chicken uh, thingamajiggers. Yep. When you left the yard, you had one, two lights. Yeah, I saw that other one wasn't working. That one was not working, and that was not working. You hit a bump at some point, and both of them came.
came back on and they stayed on the rest of the day. A bump? There was only one? Because well, I'm pretty was, sure I felt about 5,000. It was a particular bump that knocked them back into place and now they're all working. Perfect. But I remember seeing it because the whole back of the thing went <laughs> like that. There was a couple times the boom caught air out of the boom cradle and I slammed there was down. A couple times that this area here might have lifted almost to the tire was yeah. not. Like I'd see the boom bounce in the air next to me and I'm like ducking like stay over there, stay over there and boom well, back well, in the thanks. cradle. I'm very happy that you drove this and I did not drive this. Yeah, I, I'd imagine so. It was it's a ride, I tell you that. It's not a that's probably the longest trip this particular machine has ever been on. It's only got a thousand miles on it. That might be the farthest it's ever driven. Uh, other than when it came from whoever owned it to the yard where they sold it. Oh, I bet they hauled it. Oh, you think so? Just put on a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's not many miles at all for 2010. What's that? So 14 years? It's gone a thousand miles? And, and 115 of that was in the last three hours? 150 of that. 150 of that. Well, by the time I get home, it'll be a little over 150. I mapped yeah. it. In the last three or four hours, that's, yeah. it's done a, a tenth of its mileage in the last 14 years. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. it's heavy. Over 50, just over 51,000. Did you get my text? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we stopped at the scales and weighed it. I was afraid you couldn't it's, see because of the boom bucket. No, I had, I had to duck down and look under yeah. the scale. So we I stopped was, scale and weighed it. It's, I was adding it up. Just a hair under 18,000 here and just a hair under 34,000 there. Like it's maxed weight, like legal weights as it sits. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's heavy. 51,000. Luckily, luckily you're not carrying any. What are these? What's that? 385. So these can go to 18,000 pounds and we're 17,800. Cause those are the same size tires I have on both How of my trucks. How much weight was the front tires taking? All of it? It's their max. All so of it. I was within 200 pounds of legal weight here and within 500 pounds of legal weight there. So you cannot have a heavy operator. Nope, it, it's, it's all me, that's it. The tank is almost full too. It burned a quarter of a tank on the way here. That's not bad. No, no. Well, let's run that part. I want to drive that part. Yeah. Uh... You want to move some wood? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm trying to figure out how and where we want to put it, though. Let me, like, move around over here and, like, see what does what. And then yeah, and I'll move my truck into my trailer. Well out of the way. And then I'll probably tip down the uh, log splitter and move that out of the way. And I'll see if I can move. The, these are not, these are my friend's logs. These are mine. Okay. So this row right here is all okay. It's the stuff that's stacked back over there. I wonder how far out I can reach and grab I don't that. Know. But see how big those short logs are? Yeah. They're, like... 40 inches in diameter that's big so you got to cut all these yeah these are all stacked down so i just want to move some around yeah and then once you cut these up i can come back and i can move more down and set well, on yeah, this. that's what i was thinking you could try it today because this is a, a long reach and a heavy weight to try and not so much that we need to move a bunch of them but just to try see it, what it'll sure do it, see what it'll do and then i'll cut through this wood and when i cut through this you can come back another time well even if that's too far out i can't reach that far yeah you can once you cut all this up i can move those to your two skid logs there over and scoot over yeah and bring them down and then yeah. move over and yep, set this back up absolutely all right, i'm gonna go start the top up and see how it works oh that's where the exhaust is that's why it was so loud in the cab all right all right so, this activates our controls. These are our controls. Uh, SAE controls, hopefully that's what we are. Here's a load chart, because this thing can work as a crane uh, and be a crane boom, and you can use it as a crane, and here's your load chart. So, get clear of our boom stand here. Let's swing. Oh man, we got that uh, that spreader bars in the way. I forgot about that. Hey, hey. Hey, why don't you put it right here? I tried to, you didn't stop.
That's really cool.
I could cut them there. They're a little heavier than they look. They're a little heavier than they look. Those are heavy. Those are some big dogs. Yeah. Some serious firewood. It's if that's a ditching bucket, probably the worst one to try to grab stuff with. Yeah. If that had teeth on it. Oh, it would have been fine. I could have yeah. held it, but. I like how you wants... I like how you push that one log down in the back. Now it's just standing straight it's up a in the. It's kickstand. It's holding all the rest. Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, I can't get out right here. No. Uh, I mean, you could jump, but. It's got the power. It definitely has the power. Uh, I think those at max extension like that, even if you had teeth on them, that was a lot to lift all the way out. Well, hold on. It, it's over the side at max reach. It's rated for 4,795 pounds. So those are probably more than that. Not counting the bucket. Right. And that's a 60 inch wide bucket. I would guess that big log there is over 5,000 pounds. I wonder what that bucket weighs. That bucket's 60 inches. It's huge. That's got to be 800 so pounds. It's a five, oh, I'd bet at least five foot bucket on it. That's yeah. big. Plus yeah. a thumb, which this chart is not taking the thumb into account. Right. No, I think it did really good considering. And if it had teeth on it, I don't think it would have been a problem. Uh, it, it held it and you drove with it. You know what I mean? So Out there too. Out at full extension, yeah. yeah I need to get an actual digging bucket with teeth. Yeah. That's like, Maybe like a 36 would probably be good. Yeah, 36 or 48 or 42. Somewhere in there, yeah. yeah. Some teeth. On. Well, you know what I need? I need whatever width that thumb is. So yeah. that if you go to dig a trench, the thumb will fit in the trench. Right. Because if the bucket is narrower than the thumb and you go to dig a trench, it won't fit. That's more than 24. That's probably 36. Probably so. Yeah. No, I think that was a very good first real world test. Yeah. The bucket, whatever width that thumb is, that's the bucket I need. Yep. That way I can actually dig a trench and the thumb will go into the trench. So comment down below if you have a bucket. <laughs> yeah, no I don't know where to find a bucket for one of these things. I don't either. It's not like John Deere, Cat or whatever. No, and it depends on what the, the pin width is and all stuff like that no, it's too. A, well, it's a great all coupler. It's their own deal. I know. It's, quick, it's got a quick coupler on it, which is good. Right. But yeah, I, it... That bucket has nothing to grip on the end, so it just slips out. Yeah, but the second time you went at it, when you rolled the bucket under the log, that's what was the trick. Roll that and then pinch the thumb, and that's what Yeah, got... and then when it slips, it comes straight at me. <laughs> well, yeah, it just bounced off the tires. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, it was fine. basically safe. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. There's a lot of steel right here. You're, you're good. It's yeah. not a problem. And I was not, uh, until you started moving, I was not aware that you were able to drive it while using the excavator yeah, part so this is your forward and back yeah i saw it, it was and then there's this little it's just buttons right here right left or right and so there's no like control it's like you push so the button and it goes when you get out of the truck do you leave it in gear no no, no it's in neutral and there's a hydraulic motor the, on the transfer so it has a transfer even though it's only not two wheel drive but it's not front wheel drive there's still a transfer case and the yeah. transfer case so it goes transmission transfer case and the transfer case has a hydraulic motor in it okay so you leave the carrier and the main transmission in neutral uh -huh. and then this runs a hydraulic motor that spins the transfer case forward and back okay and these buttons over here run your steering yeah left or right you can't see the freaking wheels and nope they're always left and right no matter what no that was fun facing. to watch actually yeah. especially when you're facing the other direction it's gonna be tricky to do that yeah It'll just take... But it, yeah, so you can drive, drive with your feet and then run the machine with you your You know what all the old school operators say? There's no substitute for, for seat time. No substitute say. for being yeah. seat time. Seat time, seat time, seat time. Yeah. But it's cool. Oh, there's a high and low drive back here. So you can go faster. I was in low. Well, that's probably good. Let's see how fast it'll go. Okay. <laughs> Thing we want. 
I don't know why you say we. It's more you, not me. Yeah. I'm just. So, uh, I'm, I'm sure just... that's your guys' question is why did I buy this? Well, I have some ideas for this and some plans. Now we just have to see if they'll actually materialize into what I'm kind of thinking it could. But the thing was, I had to have the machine in order for those plans to maybe work out. So I had to buy this first in hopes that that does. And then if it does, hey, I got a new uh, revenue stream, making some money. And if it doesn't, it was fun to play with for a while, and someday <laughs> somebody else can have it. <laughs> exactly. If it doesn't, it hey, just, Oh, well. We had some fun playing with it. There you go. But, oh, this box right here that we picked up over there. I told them. Oh, you told them what they are? Yeah, I said these are the spreader bars that you're going to be able to use so you're able to pick stuff up with pick it. Pick vehicles up. Yeah. So these are made to be wider than a vehicle, and it's two spreader bars off to one lifting ring, so it comes down to two different spreader bars, mm -hmm. and those spreader bars each have a cable that goes down off of them so to get to all four corners of a vehicle tires. Yep. So then you hook to the vehicle's tires and lift the vehicle even evenly distributes the weight all by, the way up by the yeah tires. and since it's wider they come from the outside into the tires i was telling them it was so funny because facebook marketplace strikes again and then we show up and oh lo and behold it's a tow yard and yeah. they have a rotator and they have a rollback and casey's a just rotator too now. casey just made two new friends when he was there because they started talking all kinds of tow truck yeah. stuff in the yard it's so. technically a rotator it, yeah, it is. It rotates. It has a boom and it rotates. And when you have spreader bars rotate. and yeah, stuff. Oh no, I could totally. So there's all the different attachments for these things. Yeah. If I could just get the quick attach plate, uh -huh. mount like a twenty thousand pound. Ah uh, no, ten thousand pound winch to one of them. <laughs> and because I have the auxiliary hydraulics. Now let's be realistic. After driving 150 miles, you're not taking on any recoveries very far away. So I. <laughs> you could roll over a truck on the highway or something, but. It seemed like after we stopped for lunch, yeah, it got better. Now I don't know if it, well, and we got those weird things after we stopped for lunch, and then we hit the mountains. It seemed like it drove so much better. One, like the, you the see road, to blow the, the cobwebs are, out. <laughs> the roads are a hell of a lot better on this. Well, they just mountain. repaved that whole section. Yeah, I mean, I think it drives good as long as the road is like pretty smooth. Yeah, if it was and rutted not too out, many curves and, and not rutted. like a big uphill or downhill. So, bas so basically, all these mountains that are around us, <laughs> uphill, downhill, all yeah. around. If we do, like, you know in the old video games, when you're, like, in the, the valley and there's, there's the mountains in the background, but yeah, you yeah. never get to them? As yeah. long as we never get to them, there you go. we're fine. Yeah. So, right. no, no, like, I, I thought it actually drove really good once we got back, like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I had lunch and I just felt better, but... That's probably more what it was. Probably. It was going the same speed, doing all the same things it did before. I just felt better about you, it you were, lunch. Yeah, you, you, had, you had 50 miles under your belt at that point, and you're like, okay, yeah. I got this. I mean, I can absolutely use the same for recovery. I, even just using the sling or cable off of that, I'd use a sling. And either this, to like if a vehicle's over the ditch down the bank, like a normal car, I can use this. This is a vehicle lifting spreader bar set. So that's what it's designed for. Hook it onto the lifting ring on the end of that thing, and I can reach right down, grab the whole car, bring it up. Around, and I think up, one of the coolest features is that it rotates uh, 360 degrees around. Now, now, get this. Let's say, like, a wreck happens on the road and everything off the road, and it makes a mess, a truck wreck. Yeah. And then, like, consolidated goes, and, you know, they flip the truck over. Maybe I even help out with the Zach lift and do that. And then I bring this in, and we do the cleanup. Does it sit right there and just pull everything right up the road to clean up, load a dump trailer? Yep, just have somebody pull up next to you with a big end dump and just That's fill it. That's not my master plan for this thing that I'm hoping. No, but it's a bo but it's a bonus. I can use it for that absolutely. Yeah. I can do clean up with this. Um, yeah. It can absolutely lift vehicles. If it grabbed that log out at full reach, a car is going to be especially with that bucket off of it. Right. Car would be nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Right. I think this could grab a car at a full reach, just swing it all around all you want. It ain't going to matter. I do think some uh, stabilizers would be nice. I've seen, I don't think I've seen any of this size have outriggers. I've seen the two axle ones have outriggers. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this size. Yeah. Because it's definitely got the power to tip itself over. Like it'll oh, 100%. Grab, it, it would lift until it came over. Absolutely. Yeah, you're never going to run out of lifting power. You're just going to run out of stability. Yeah. Imagine what it lifts straight off the back. Oh, yeah, it'd be crazy. So, yeah, I do have plans for this thing. Hopefully they work out, but they're never going to 
become a thing unless I had the machine first. I actually right. had that problem once. Like I told you ben, that years ago I had a, a contract offered to me that w one of these would be perfect for, but I had to have the machine in order to get the contract. And they said, you get the machine, you've got the job. Yeah. And it would have been years long work, steady work for it. And I got outbid in an auction and couldn't couldn't make it happen. Now so, I made it happen. I'm seven years too late, but. So what that really means is this was just a redemption purchase. <laughs> Yeah, Screw I got you! I got now. one! Yeah, I, I got, got one it. now! <laughs> and it has a thumb, which not many do. It has a jake brake, which almost none do. The only thing that would have been cool is if it was two years newer, I believe, it would have been a Series 4 instead of a Series 3 and have an Allison automatic instead of a 9-speed. That would have been cool. This is the epitome of you have to spend money to make money. Yes. You have to buy it in order to go make something with it. Yeah, I spent the money, so now yep. hopefully the <laughs> making the money part comes next. We'll see what happens. But if I didn't buy this, my idea and my plans that I have and that possible work I have for this would have never... Right, exactly. You would you would have not been able to do any of that. So. Nope. So I had to buy it first. Lift with your legs, not with your back. That box looks questionable. I think that they bought that and they never opened it. So... Do they actually know that there's a spreader bars in there? That's a good question. I hope so because I paid them for it. I know, right? It's, it's, it feels like there's spreader bars in there. It, there's definitely something heavy in there. Yeah. I mean, it could I be. Bought, I bought something of significant. For all you know, it could be Jimmy Hoffa or something. Who knows? Yeah. Well, it kind of looks like a long, skinny casket. Could be. There it is. Got it. A little, little farther than you need, but that's all right. Hopefully my scheming and plans work out in the future and this becomes a, a new division of the company and a new revenue stream. If not, like Ben said, at least it was fun to play with for a little bit. And somebody else can <laughs> enjoy it after you. Yeah. So right, I'm going to head home with it. I will probably come back and get my pickup tomorrow with the rollback. Oh, okay. And I'll just drive this home from here. Okay. And then we'll see you guys next time.